We all love PC gaming, whether that be FPSs, races, arcades, and simulators, but with RTX still at a premium, we tested Nvidia's Pascal GTX 1070 just last year. But just how well does the most popular graphics card on Steam hold up in 2019? Hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas, and this is my 2019 review of the GTX 1060 6GB. Quickly covering pricing and availability, you can get your hands on one of these used on eBay for around £150, making it well under half of its RTX counterpart, as well as significantly cheaper than the 1070, its bigger brother. Today, we'll be reviewing the MSI OC V1 version of this card, which is only marginally different to its reference founders edition and is basically the same price on the used market. To put everything into context and perspective, I want to quickly look at the differences between the 1066 gig, the infamous 1063 gigabyte, the GTX 1070, and also the RX 580 model, which can be had for around the same amount of money. The main takeaways here are that despite the 1066 gigabyte version being substantially different from its three gigabyte sibling, it fall behind the RX 580 in video memory, bus width, and CUDA cores, or stream process in this case, even if in some cases, that RX 580 8 gig is way cheaper than the card we're looking at today. Taking a brief look at what you can expect, a standard array of triple DP, single HDMI, and a dual link DVI will occupy the IO bracket of a standard card. Whilst this one has an odd and slightly underwhelming single DVI, single HDMI, and single DP. Just the three ports here. If you were looking to get a card with a substantial amount of IO, I would definitely recommend going against this MSI OC V1. Most units will come with a single six pin supplemental power connector, meaning that most low end power supplies will support it and draws fewer watts than its AMD counterpart. The wide variety of add-in board partners and third party cards means that you get loads of different choices in terms of aesthetic, design, quietness, pretty much everything you could expect from any high end card but on a 1060. And since these are used and kind of old now, you don't have to spend mega money to get the design you like. Moving on to benchmarks, I decided to cover 10 general tests eight of these being games and two being standalone benchmarking tools. And for reference, all tests were conducted at 1920 by 1080 at the maximum settings possible for each test. Just to try and get this thing to sweat. My standardized test rig comprises of an Intel Core i7-8700K at stock clock speeds, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3000 megahertz, and all games were run from a SATA based SSD. As you can see, since we are cranking the 1080p settings to as far as the sliders will allow us, the frame rates are pretty low in some cases, otherwise being around 60fps. Lowering the anti-aliasing settings on most of these games will result in a 20-30% to improvement, drastically raising that experience to another level. I don't expect all owners of the 1066GB to push their games to the max at 1080p, and high settings should do the trick just fine, however I really wanted to test this card, since giving it an easy time wouldn't do it justice. I feel like it performed admirably considering the harsh conditions set upon it, and in the large majority of challenges set, it managed to achieve bang on or close to that magic 60fps figure. For any kind of competitive games, as long as the settings aren't mega, the 144hz or even 240hz barriers in some cases can easily be smashed. As an entry into the world of PC gaming, or even an upgrade for an older card, I think the GTX 1066GB is an admirable option. At £150 you're getting a great card, but I would like to lower that price a little bit, maybe £125, and get something that may be a little older, but also is going to give you a better value. Now the one problem is the 1066GB was used massively for mining during the mining craze, so you have to watch out for used units. They might have stuff like louder fans due to the worn bearings, they might have significantly less performance, and of course reliability is always a factor, but I think as long as you use a site like eBay which gives you good buyer and seller protection, you're pretty much handled there. I can happily recommend the GTX 1066 go by to anyone, and I really appreciate Callum or Calci for letting me borrow his card for an evening just to test it on the test bench. Thank you all so much for watching, please do like, dislike, comment and subscribe if you're around to and miss a video like this one. I really hope you enjoyed this video, it's kind of different from my phone content. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons, you guys are awesome. Links to everything will be in the video description as always, including my new social media. I've been Ryan Thomas, you guys have been awesome, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.